So what I'm presenting today is shuttling between classroom and familial discourses, an examination of two Saudi female doctoral students' multiple identities. It's kind of interesting and compelling at the same time, so I hope you enjoy it. Over the past 10 years, when King Abdullah and Abdul Aziz started his uh, scholarship programs, a big number of male and female Saudi students have been abroad studying degree programs in different areas of specialties. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, a considerable number of these students are women who are pursuing uh, advanced degrees in different fields and who are actually taking up uh, multiple roles, roles in addition to their role as graduate students. I am an example of them. I am uh, a wife. Uh, doctoral students apparently, a wife and a mother of three children. This is very interesting. I mean, that's not my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I found that um, in, in Instagram and it was kind of very, really interesting to see a couple of Saudi women trying to describe their multiple roles and themselves by saying like wife, mom and a student sometimes student, wife, and mom. And so finding myself encountering several challenges, trying to balance between family obligations and higher education demands, I just, I thought, like I was thinking about other doctoral students, whether they have the similar challenges or not. So that's why I was interested in conducting this study. The research questions that guided uh, my study the first one, how do, of course, Huda and Rima are just pseudonyms, so these are not the real names, negotiate and construct their multiple gendered identities according to two crucial and distinct discourses. I'm focusing on classroom and family discourses, in which they are socially situated. The second question was, in which ways do familial and classroom discourses Hudas and Rima's changing and multiple identities contradict or complement each other. The third question, to what extent do Huda and Rima feel change in their understanding and perceptions of self and their gender identities since they started their doctoral program in the United States? The theoretical underpinnings that I used to analyze my data collection and um, to discuss the findings. First, G's discourse with a big D, which is fine, I found it like, this is the big term in education. Um, and it's not just language, it's more than that. It's ways of being and acting. Forms of life which integrate words, acts, values, beliefs, attitudes, and social identities. There are two main discourses, I think most of us know that. The primary discourse and the secondary discourse. The primary discourse, uh, refers to home-based institutions, and the secondary discourse refers to uh, non-based home institutions. Uh, the family discourse represent, in my study represents the primary discourse, and the classroom discourse represents the secondary discourse. The reason why I focused on these two discourses, based on the assumption that they influence, interfere, and empower one another. Also, I used academic discourse socialization perspective to analyze uh, their socialization and practices in the classroom discourse, um, and which based on the assumption that they are these um, kind of socialization are complex uh, dynamics and socially situated process. Um, I focused on a classroom discourse. I thought it would be huge if I just think about academic discourse, so for that, research, I just focused on classroom discourse for the reason that it's an important locus where learners negotiate their roles, positions, and various levels of the academic communities that surround them. Social constructivist notion of gender and identity, based on the uh, assumption that it, both of them are socially constructed. Language is investment. What I actually tried to do in my study, instead of focusing on language and how the participants' multiple identities and roles can be understood or implicated in their language investments, 
I try to um, look uh, to see how these multiple identities and roles are actually understood and related to their investment in family roles and gender identities. And by gendered identities, uh, I'm focusing on three identities. Uh, student identity, doctoral students, of course, um, mothering identity, and spousal identity. Sitting and participants. I, uh, my participants are two Saudi uh, female PhD students. They share education, uh, linguistic, and cultural backgrounds. Similar, I mean, education and linguistic and cultural backgrounds. Uh, both uh, indicated that their initial goals of ca for coming to the United States and uh, pursuing higher degrees were for self-empowerment in education and for a, f a better future work. Okay. I'm just smiling because my husband is there. <laughs> okay. Um, both indicated that they are very committed to their education and family. The language used, uh, Arabic was or is the dominant language in their households, while uh, English is just for school and for, you know, like socializing with other people who speak English, which I found it interesting. Uh, this is a detailed uh, table of the participants. Uh, Huda, who is uh, 32 years old and has been here in the United States for four years, she has her master's degree in evaluation and measurement and she is pursuing a doctoral program in the same major and at the same university. She has one boy and she lives with her brother here in the United States. This is kind of like there's a story between that. So she's not divorced, but she preferred coming here to the United States and her husband actually is, um, he works as um, in the health of, uh, in the Ministry of Health back home in Saudi Arabia and he has a doctoral degree in microbiology. And she preferred coming to the United States because she thought it will be um, kind of a reasonable um, goal because she had like some um, material or marital, I'm sorry, issues with her husband. Um, she worked as an assistant teacher at the Saudi University for 40 years, whereas Rima is 30 years old has been here in the United States six years. She has a master's degree in chemistry, and she's working on uh, her doctoral degree in chemistry and at the same university. The, she has uh, three daughters. She lives with her spouse, who is actually pursuing a master's degree in architecture. Uh, she has um, a teaching. She had a, a teaching experience in high school for one year. The data collection, <coughs> I use the background questionnaire that includes mostly uh, questions about linguistic, family, and educational background. Uh, and then, so the primary methodology that I used for my study were semi-structured interviews, which I conducted, uh, I mean, I conducted two interviews via Skype uh, with the two participants, and each interview lasted for about one hour and a half. I used open-ended questions that included a uh, question about their challenges, experiences, you know, like educational experience here in the America, in America, um, about questions about their family discourse, about um, classroom discourse, and uh, the language I used for the conversation was mainly English. Results. Data collection actually uh, yielded a lot of uh, issues about language, gender, culture, and identity. But for this study, I tried to focus on the findings that are related to the participants' multiple identities and roles, and how they negotiate these identities. And as I told you, I'm focusing on three identities. So first, Huda and Rima found themselves facing several challenges in both family and classroom discourses that put them in a process of renegotiation and reaccommodation of their gendered identities while they were, are, they were switching discourses and roles. Their challenges uh, mainly uh, included time management, mothering demands, higher expectations from the academy. Uh, 
The study showed that gender or culture-related norms and expectations played a central role in escalating identity conflict and struggle within a given discourse. And this was clear in um, uh, Huda's actually situation. As I told you, she came here in her own, and she is the, prim the uh, primary caregiver of her son. And coming from a Saudi culture, it's kind of like um, uncommon to have like uh, that considerable number of women who are coming, uh, you know, like who are traveling abroad and studying in their own. So she faced, or she is actually facing a lot of social pressure because of that. <laughs> There's an agreement. It's <laughs> <laughs> a social pressure. <laughs> So, enacting multiple identities and roles within the two discourses appear to challenge, to be challenging or empowering. And I have an example for that. Uh, for Huda, she thought since, uh, you know, like her, her mothering, spousal, and student identities were actually all of them empowering and challenging for her, she thought that. And uh, for Rima, she thought like her spousal and mothering identities were more challenging and delimiting her participation and engagement in the academy. Um, also, some identities appeared more salient and powerful than others with reference to particular space and time. Huda's mothering identity were, was very powerful uh, since she is the primary caregiver while Rima uh, appeared to be uh, enacting uh, or, to see, uh, or to see that her mothering and spousal identities are, uh, I mean, all of her identities, gender identities, were powerful and demanding in terms of responsibilities and needs. Uh, uh, as they were enacting multiple identities and roles, they were actually exercising self of agency. Intentionally contest a long standing assumption about their capabilities to speak up and succeed in the academy. Uh, I have some examples about that. Uh, there actually, there is uh, an example which both of them indicated that they were more interested and willing to invest their student-professor uh, relationships, um, which based on their understanding of power relations. They thought we are very committed to education and we want to show that we are capable and we are knowledgeable scholars. And uh, something interesting, uh, uh, Huda indicated that I think being a doctoral student is very different than just a graduate student because most of my professors see me, sees me, uh, see me as um, a future researcher rather than just a graduate student. So if they expect more, they, they expect that you know a lot, you show your contribution. Um, also another example uh, is uh, concerning the importance of English language. They, English for them wasn't like a survival tool, but a powerful tool to claim their voices in the classroom and to show that, to position themselves in a powerful way. Uh, the classroom discourses. Also a confluence of discourses with a big D and gendered identities, including spousal, mothering, and doctoral students' identities, impacted in different ways, either promoting or hindering Huda's and Rima's socialization, participation, and self-agency. Both, both frequently uh, stated that they found, fi they usually find themselves uh, themselves torn between family obligations and higher education demands. And um, with enacting these different identities and roles, they found themselves sometimes, you know, like um, either to choose to invest in their uh, family discourse and their kids and their, uh, I mean, family, yeah, family discourse, or to invest in their academic discourse or classroom discourse. However, their awareness of these multiple identities 
and their understanding of uh, or their active practice of agency help them mitigate the conflicting and complex nature of being situated within and between the two disparate discourses. Implication and recommendations. Um, these women do not only bring linguistics and cultural uh, background experience, they bring their challenges, multiple identities, knowledge. So in order to understand all uh, all uh, the challenges they are actually facing, we have to look at the family and social challenges too. And attention to the social dimension with reference to their participation and investment at the academy. Uh, higher education involves and accumulates overlapping and multifacted identities and roles, which might help understanding how higher education and how doctor students are actually facing a lot of challenges if they are enacting these multiple rules might help us better understand how the, these students and others are navigating, renegotiating, or contesting their identities and roles in light of the new social and academic complexities. Considering these multiple challenges and experience to better understand these women's <coughs> status and level of participation within their, their chosen communities, and the factors that prevent or enable great integration and success and the consequences of that involvement or lack of involvement. Great interest should not only, uh, should not only, should be, uh, I mean, uh, should not be, um. <laughs> okay. Great interest should not be only paid for, um, you know, like to recognize and address these challenges, but also uh, professors should uh, take that to evaluate their engagement and investment and also to provide them with ongoing socio-emotional support. Um, my recommendation uh, for future research, I thought about maybe I can do like a, a comparative study and I will compare like uh, two students who got their master's in, um, I mean, like my participant, they got their master's degree and they're working on their doctoral degree here in the United States with other Saudi students who just got their master's in Saudi Arabia and they, they came to pursue a PhD degree. So I was thinking about whether they will face similar challenges or not in terms of acculturation, uh, social challenges, linguistic challenges, um, and the transition in both discourses, family and classroom discourse. And that's it. These are my references for what I used for this PowerPoint. And oh, I forgot the last one. <laughs> so, any questions?